The following podcast is a Next Level production. What is all this acid? Well, um, you told me to clean up my own mess. I just have to thank you for teaching me such a valuable lesson and personal responsibility. Yeah, I'm not buying that. What's going on? You got blood on you. Come on, talk to me. Hey, I'm your dad. Um, okay, but you gotta promise you won't be pissed. Hey, panelers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoiler-full podcast about the Umbrella Academy Season 3, Episode 5, The Kindest Cut. So this is going to be a spoiler-full podcast about that particular episode. Obviously, you must have watched the episode, so that's why you're here. But uh, me and Steve watched it, and here we are to discuss it. <laughs> and reminder that we have watched, we're watching it from the perspective of having seen the whole season, even though Mark and I have bad memories sometimes. But we <laughs> have watched the whole season. So there are times when we'll say things like, uh, did that happen in this episode or was it yeah, the next exactly. episode? <laughs> <laughs> Just bear with us. And then yeah, obviously, yeah. I'm sure a lot of people have binged it already, too. It's been out for some time. So I'm sure exactly. you guys are a little bit aware of it. If not, and this is your first after while you're watching it that's fine as well so with that uh steve why don't you give us a synopsis of this particular episode sure klaus's relationship with the death proves more complicated than anyone knew victor finally learns what happened to the umbrella's mothers dun, dun, dun. yeah it's this was an interesting episode and mm -hmm. i really liked it you know my initial thoughts are literally just it cleared up a little bit of stuff here and there but we got to see a little bit more about Klaus, <laughs> and I really enjoyed that aspect. Yeah, and there was things that I that I caught back on my third, and and I don't know if it was, I did a fourth watch of it, but uh, so there are little things that I caught that uh, that I've, I've got in my my uh, discussion points and stuff that I like. They set up a lot of things for the season. We did get some answers to some of the questions that we've been just trying to figure out though and i thought that was interesting when i had to go i actually had to go back to my notes for episode one to confirm something that i have that i want to discuss ah okay all right well, well with that we'll move right along into our top highlights of the episode so steve you want to start us off Sure. Uh, the one I was just alluding to, uh, mm -hmm. which is now we understand why there were only 16 births because Harlan killed 27 of the mothers. We get that confirmed by Vanya and Harlan in this episode when they're looking, when they're talking about the deaths of the mothers. I think Vanya actually says you killed 27 of our mothers or something, something to that, to that effect. So I yeah. actually went back in my notes to, to, like I said, to episode one, to actually confirm that that's what it was. It was 16 and that in the original episode one, season one, it was 43. So now we've got that discrepancy kind of cleared up, which I'm glad they did because it was starting to really bug me. And I couldn't, <laughs> I did not remember that this, that this did get cleared up. I think I mentioned it a few, a few episodes ago that I said, I think I remember them clearing it up, but I don't know exactly when. Yeah. And so there, there's things, but yeah, this episode, that's, that was the big one, or that was the first big one for me was just that realization that, that Harlan, I don't know why, what, 27 i don't know what the significance of it was obviously it included all of six of hours yeah of our of the umbrella academy excluding ben so it was but and then also 21 other mothers that we apparently don't know anything about yeah but it also it also reveals to us that there are at least nine more other because there were seven members of the sparrow academy so there's at least nine more of these children out there somewhere. And I don't know if that's dealt with. I don't remember if that's, if there's any dealing with that. Well, uh, we only I, have one more season, I believe. Yeah. I think so. this next season is going to be the last. One. So there's, there's some things that they won't be able to tie up. And of course we'll have to see how they get past this season. Cause they've, cause we know the ending, 
and which is a doozy. So mm-hmm. we'll have to see how uh, how they get to the next season and what kind of a if they have any kind of a time jump or if they start right where they are. But uh, but yeah, I, I I liked it that finally those those numbers got confirmed that had been confusing me. Yeah, same here. It's an answer that I think mm-hmm. a lot of people had because <laughs> it's like wait a minute that number that number wait because mm-hmm. they all remember back from the first season and how it all started. Right. So that that's a good thing that we got an answer to that. One of mine was uh, just seeing Klaus and his journey and him realizing that he had all those moments in his life. He he didn't realize he literally died. Yeah. <laughs> those were moments of death, and he didn't realize that. Oh, I thought that was just something that just happened, and I, I just survived it. Yeah, I love that. What does he say? He says, he says, oh, those were near-death experiences. Those were death-death experiences. Yeah, yeah he just you realizes know? it. It's like, what? <laughs> well, and... Then, and, and- Go ahead. No, he uh, just like the the few experiences that we do see is like he sees mm-hmm. his young self in the mausoleum, and you see Hargreaves there counting the time down to when he actually did die, mm-hmm. and then falling off the building. Yeah, when he was a teenager during like uh, I guess a party at night mm-hmm. on top of a building, and he falls off and he dies, and then of course the the one with the spear. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. last one that he, you know, that he actually did die. And it yeah. seemed that it took longer for him to come back. You know, that's one of the things that we see at the very beginning of the episode. Of course, you just talked about it. We see Har- we see Hargreaves come in to the mausoleum and he says, I think he said experiment number 34 or yes. something like that. Time between uh, whatever death and and re- re- wrote a revival, you know, th- he says – however many hours or minutes or i can't remember what the exact amount of time was but so you can tell that he's he's killing klaus and then seeing how long it takes him to come back and yeah. that's just messed up and of course we're gonna we're gonna get a montage of that here in an episode or so yes. where we get klaus training i I, <laughs> I put that in quotation marks he's gonna be training to see how fast he can come back exactly uh, yeah with with the help of somebody we know Mm-hmm. And uh, I think up until this time, do uh, too, they actually do clarify how many times he has died up until that point, which uh, I think he found out from his mother, and he apparently died fifty six times. Yeah, I think that number that that number seems. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how this to to, to watch this play out again because. Uh, and he also gets to meet his mother too, his birth mother mm-hmm. uh, in the death world. That's right. That's right. That was part of this episode. He did meet her, meet up with her, but she sent him back. So yep. he goes, oh, well, you must see everything, all the cartoons. And it was like, oh, wait, you're Amish. And she goes, yeah. no, we got everything here. <laughs> and she says, I mostly watch you. And he's like, even the naughty bits. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's great. Because <laughs> Klaus is just amazing. That's great. My next one is uh, is kind of Victor and Harlan. Mm-hmm. We get this interaction between them with Victor blaming uh, himself for what Harlan became and Harlan kind of trying to reassure him. No, no, it wasn't your fault. But it, 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 at the same time, he, he kind of in the previous episode kind of said it was, you know, you left and mom, this happened with mom. And mm-hmm. so it, it's, that was an interesting conversation, but there's a moment, there's also a moment in there when she realizes and when he, when they share that vision of him killing those mothers that she specifically tells him don't tell the umbrella academy because Mm. she knows how they'll react and particularly allison i think she knows how allison's going to react to it so she makes sure don't tell them anything about what you did yeah because allison lost a lot Mm -hmm. not only did she lose her husband in the current world because we knew her she had a, a child and a husband in the first season it's not mm-hmm. the one that we remember from last season when they were in, um, where was it, in Texas? 1963, yeah, yeah. in Dallas. Yeah. yeah, in Dallas during that time where she met another man and, you know, but uh, she also lost him as well. So she had so many losses at that point, as well as feeling prejudice against her within that particular society, too, within Texas in, in the 60s. So she lost a lot of those people and friends that she had. And then she has her family, but the family's all messed up, as we know. But they are family yet still. And the fact is that you could tell that 
her attitude has changed within mm-hmm. these past few episodes. You know, they actually talk about that because in the very beginning, Luther he has a reaction to Allison's bruise, <laughs> to Victor's bruise, and then Diego's yeah. bruise. And yeah. he thinks Harlan had to do with everything, and it wasn't, which was pretty interesting and funny all at the same time. Yeah, but since Diego explains what happened to him and Allison uh, at the bar brawl, mm-hmm. then they understand, and then Victor explains what happened with him and Harlan, or them and Harlan, and they uh, then it all comes together, and you know Luther is just like, wait, what? And yeah. they it it was kind of like, wait, oh, we have to go after Harlan now, but it wasn't that at that point. It's just the all this confusion is because it's always seems that Luther is the last person to know anything. Yeah. If yeah. you notice within this particular season, he doesn't know because he was kidnapped and they took mm-hmm. him and he had no clue. Sparrows thought he was an idiot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that that goes right into my my next one, which is, is Allison. We see more of her drinking in this one. You already talked about the violence at the bar and Diego. You know, it's 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 becoming an interesting relationship between Diego and Allison Mm. that he's kind of feeding her violence. But at the same time, he's kind of, you can tell there's a couple of times when he was like, "Mm, maybe we should dial this back a little bit, you know? Mm. Uh, And then of course we have that scene between her and Luther where she rumors, where she rumors him. Oh, she tries to. No, I mean, yeah, she, she, no, she succeeded. She, she shut it off. But I think, because she realized it was the wrong thing, but yeah, she rumored him into having, and he starts to get forceful with her because of that rumor, mm. you know, and she's like, Oh wait, stop. And so she stops him. And that's when he runs off mm-hmm. to go be with Sloan. But it, that's again, we've seen so many varying shades of Allison. And this one is so different. You know, the, oh, yeah. the first season, the first season we see the struggle she has with being a mother who's separated from, her child, she can only rarely see her child. Uh, it, it was apparent that first season it was not, it wasn't 50 50 custody. There was some kind of, because, you know, because he had figured out that she was rumoring the girl. And so that's why they had separated. And so she rarely gets to see her, but she at least gets to see her, you mm-hmm. know, and then she has their tryst with, with Luther in the first season. And then the second season, she meets the guy in the 60s and they actually get, I think they were married. Yes, and, they were. Yeah, and and so she has that that we see that side of her, that softer side of her with with that, and then of course she comes back to the present, and mm-hmm. we get this bitter, Allison, angrier, yeah, and angry, she's and mm-hmm. bent on revenge or to take it out on the world. Yeah, and we know not just like anybody, but just literally just taking it out on what she needs to do. And I think Diego is that here, let's vent this frustration that you have built up. And that's why they got into that bar, bar room brawl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was trying, he thought he was helping her, but really he was just increasing. Yeah. 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 Fueling it. It's an odd transition, but at least we saw some style of character development with them. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously with Victor, it changed from Vanya to Victor kind of quickly within a matter of a season, but that's fine. But it also changed in a, in a good way, I think, for the fact that Victor is taking responsibility and wanting to help and focusing that effort. But the, the siblings, the other siblings are just not having it there because they're really against, of all things, which is the, uh, the issue is Harlan. Right. And, uh, you know, then, yeah, the, the, the other cool moments that were in this was Diego and, and Stan. But the <laughs> fact is that Diego leaves Stan with Klaus and then apparently Klaus, you know, dies mm-hmm. but due to the spear. And then you, in this particular, I think it was last episode that he gets shot. Yeah, he end. got shot right at the end of the the last episode. Yeah. And then he wakes up. He wakes up in that whatever that uh, other world is, where he sees the girl, mm-hmm. yeah. and then he 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 finds his mom. Yep. You know. Yeah, and in this case, you know, you have Diego, and he's trying to be more fatherly to Stan. But in this case, he goes and he goes. He sees Stan getting all these cleaner fluids and everything, and he goes, "Something's up." And then he goes and he follows him. He goes, you killed my brother. He yeah, goes, you could yeah. have just 
You were just gonna burn the body, or just, just gonna dispose of the body? Yeah, <laughs> I love, I loved this scene. This was great between we, we, this. It's, it's really, it's a father son, even though we we know the truth, but it's a yeah. father son bonding moment between Diego and Stan. In that they're they're trying to get this this <laughs> Klaus's body. They're taking it somewhere. I I don't know if he said he was gonna show it to the family. Or or what he was gonna do, but they had it rolled up in that rug and the know, carpet. And the, yep, yeah. And, and, they, the, and the bellman, the bellman sees them, and, and he's like, "What are you doing? <laughs> like, we're playing guy rolled up in a rug." And the bellman's <laughs> like, "Well, I hope you win." And then he just moves on, which is hilarious. The bellman, I just love him. He's amazing. We could have uh, we could have a show, a spinoff show, just about the, the obsidian. Bellman hotel uh, you know we, we see those background characters again the guy with the funky hair and the woman with the like the pillbox hat yes. uh we see the the guy in the uniform and the the hat that all these things in the background that we get no explanation for but it's just it's just hilarious that uh, that whole scene and, and we just see that and then obviously when lila comes back she sees that diego and stan have started to bond and that was really great but i've got yeah, it, it, it's a, a nice, I, I love that whole feeling too. It's funny too how it's like when she sees Diego and Stan bonding, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like they're, they get really, really aroused about it. <laughs> yeah, that was another funny scene because like she, she kind of she kind of starts to blow him off a little bit and she's like I can go find another dilf, you know, <laughs> and, and he's like he spins her around and is like no, we're going to bed right now and takes yep. her away. So, yeah, that was great. And there's a there's a moment there and I didn't catch it until I think the third or fourth watch when they send Stan somewhere so they can go have their booty call and uh, Diego says, "Oh, and don't forget your ear medicine, it's downstairs." I I love the callback to the ear medicine because yep. I think I mentioned last episode or before I was like, man, do they ever bring that up again? And yep, they, they certainly do. So <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I, I that whole that whole those three, and then when Klaus wakes up in the in the elevator and he's poking at his chest and you know uh it's just <laughs> then he goes downstairs and showing the family and everybody finds out that he can come back to life. It's just uh, I it's it's a hilarious and we're gonna see more of that in the next few episodes and i'm excited to, to watch it play out yeah because before then i think the siblings only knew that he was able to communicate with the dead yeah and we saw it, he's actually he was actually able to manifest the dead because remember when they had that fight with the army yes he actually was able to manifest ben into existence and other ghosts into existence so we haven't seen that yet this season and i don't think we see that this season so i, I no. hope they pick that up next season but yeah at least with this version of ben we'd get to see his abilities mm -hmm. within this particular season as compared to before because we only knew ben through flashbacks of with his powers yeah and, and the, then the, the, the few then times we saw a klaus ghost. yeah with yeah klaus interacting with the ghost and then like you said then we get to see him manifest there in that la that final episode of season two, he actually manifests or the second to the last episode, whichever one it was, that yeah. Ben actually manifests into existence. I thought that was great. And like I said, we, we need to see that again. Hmm. Let's talk about that family meeting in the hotel bar. It's okay. so funny how five telling the siblings all about the Kugel Blitz and how it will be another four to five days for existence to disappear. Now it's like you it's like literally what you know five looks forward to doing all the time yeah but, yeah but, exactly he tries to say he doesn't but then he's like it like, literally it pulls me back in every time so yeah that was i didn't have any notes about that so i'm glad you brought that up i i hadn't uh that's one of those things where at you know at the beginning of the episode i think luther says we're gonna have a family meeting and they all scatter yeah. and so it's not until five comes back mm -hmm. that they actually have a family meeting and lila that was so sweet with uh, when five even looks at lila and she starts to leave and he's like no you're family now yep and Dude. even klaus says it yeah 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 so i it was really cool it, it was great to see again them them kind of realizing that we have to save the world again but then five going but i told myself not to save the world so i need mm. to figure that out which i thought was a, another interesting thing but yeah really really great the last the discussion thing i really have is i thought it was interesting that the when the sparrows get back to the sparrow academy mm -hmm. i think they have sloan with them now or when they get back and they have sloan they care more about getting revenge for Alphonse and Jamie than they do saving the world. 
yes. which I, I thought, or saving the universe, which I thought was really interesting because it, it shows to, again, it shows this lack of connection they have with humanity that because they're just, yeah, they were literally pampered. They were stars to the world. Whereas mm -hmm. with, uh, in the umbrella Academy itself, Hargreaves kept them hidden, locked away and only brought them out to do uh, within their heyday of, you know, taking care of the world when it was needed. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, with these kids, they had everything, like all the cool food, the workout mm -hmm. material, their, like, faces on a lunchbox, uh, on billboards, everything, and they were worshipped. Yeah. So they, they thought the world revolved around them, whereas that they needed to take care of the world. So in this case, they're more concerned about each other and not caring literally what happens to the universe or the world. Yeah. And they just want revenge. And the Umbrella Academy is willing to give Harland to them, you know, but that's when Victor tries to sneak him off and Allison. And I think this is where Allison's – Allison might have – at this point, she might be starting to suspect – that Harlan had something to do or there's something darker with Harlan because she takes him away mm. and we know that eventually she's going to kill him and, and return and give his body to the sparrows, but that's not for a couple of episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, it's, it's kind of them working together at that point. Mm -hmm, uh, exactly. I, I, yeah. Not to uh, move ahead, but yeah, because we don't see that they, we kind of get that gist because that's what it started in that hotel room when they were together. Right. And that's where I think it kind of started. And we we wouldn't we don't we wouldn't have seen that like in a first watch, but it, with this perspective of looking back on it, we start to see, oh, now I see where this was where the, the groundwork was was Go. was laid. Yep. Yeah, for this. Well, there was an interesting part that I had to you talk about uh Ben and Fee. Were, like you said, they were more concerned about taking revenge, but they go into the basement. Actually, Five uh, finds out where the Kugel Blitz is, which is in the basement of the Sparrow or Umbrella Academy <laughs> yeah. building. That's another one of those moments, right, where Klaus, where Klaus goes, oh, you mean the ball of fire in the basement where we keep the luggage in the, in the storage? And they're like, you knew where it was? Why didn't you tell us? And he's like, I tried to tell you. You weren't listening to me. Exactly. <laughs> but the fact that you got Ben and Fee down there, they use Mother. They use her eye to look mm -hmm. into the Kugel Blitz. Yeah. Which causes another wave for the Kugel Blitz. And you see more people disappear within the, the town, which, and I think that's the one that takes out the bellman, the guy in the uniform and yes. a couple in the hotel as well there. So we got a lot more people getting taken out by this Kugel Blitz. Yeah. A lot more people get taken out and, uh, it, it pretty much exacerbates it to the point where that's why five knew that they only have so much time. Mm -hmm. And then they only have that X amount of time to uh, fix the world. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and that that's where that's where this whole idea of getting Harlan back to the sparrows really comes into play because Five's like, well, we have to work with them to try to get rid of this thing. We're not going to be able to get into the academy and yeah. get down to this basement unless we're working with them. So we might as well give him Harlan, and that's why, again, like we talked about, Victor tries to take him away, and Allison ends up taking him. But that's yep. like I said, that's gonna that's gonna play out in the next in the next couple of episodes as well. Plus, we also get at the very end the kicker with Five. And he shows his tattoo piece. <laughs> mm -hmm. and Klaus, goes, and Klaus yeah. figures it out what it is. It was a, a biker gang. Mm -hmm. And he goes, oh, yeah, they used to do security for me back in the day. Blah, 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 blah. I was like, oh, OK. Then he goes, finds it, finds to see where, how he got that tattoo. And yeah. he had taken it off of his older self that was being kept alive that had the one arm. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he, and we see of all things. They're old. Pogo? Is it Pogo? Pogo. Oh, it's just yeah. Not, yeah. Yeah. But it's, it, and that was an interesting scene between him and Klaus because, because, you know, he tell, he's telling Klaus that he really wants to retire. And Klaus is like, well, then just do it. Just don't do what you would, what you were going to do. And, and it won't. And so it's one of those, that was one of those moments where I was kind of confused a little bit because mm -hmm. on one hand, you know, uh, fives, future self tells him don't try to save the world so klaus kind of gives him an out he says you can you don't have to go find this tattoo and get this tattoo stay away from anything that's going to take your arm out go raise goats or whatever he said <laughs> yeah you know on a farm and and five's like 
realizing that he's he's not going to be able to he can't do that he's got to work he's he's his head is so with the time commission you know mm-hmm. and that it's he's more about fulfilling the timeline fixing it but making sure it doesn't get out of whack so he knows he has to get that tattoo he's yeah. going to have to eventually lose his arm in order for everything to play out the way it's supposed to play out but that's also what with the Kugel Blitz is here. So I, I, that's where I was just like, what is he trying to do? Is he trying to save the world? Is he not? And he kind of is. So, <laughs> but that scene was that did, with that scene of him walking into the bar. Did that give you Terminator Two yes. vibes when, yeah, when he walks into that bar at the very beginning? Yeah, I I really got that vibe this time. And there, everybody's looking at him like the way they looked at Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, and, <laughs> it's like, but then again, he's like a short kid going into. He, he's bar. like a short kid. Yeah, and Arnold was a naked man. You know, <laughs> so yeah. But it was just it. It wasn't until the I don't know the this most recent watch that I picked up on that. I was like, this is very to the point of even like one woman looks at him and kind of goes. Hmm, you know, <laughs> so, but yeah, that was great. The only other thing I really kind of had was the Sparrow logos. It was pretty clever. They were on Klaus's pupils when he, after he died and his eyes were still open. Yes. The, the camera came down and, and, and went in on those, those logos, both the Sparrow and the, you had to really kind of search to get the umbrella one. Cause it wasn't really super well done, but mm. it was in there. So yeah, those are, that was really cool to see. Uh, looking over my notes, there's a few things that I did catch. The wallpaper in Harlan's room is the the same pattern on the rug in Kubrick's film, The Shining. Mm-hmm. But in this case, it's all green tones. Oh, okay. Which is wild, too, because, you know, all, all weird, strange things that are going on within the uh, these this series or this episode, mostly. Mm-hmm. That's everything. I've got one. I've got a couple of quotes. Yeah. We haven't already said yet. But uh, we talked about the Bellman. I talked about the ear medicine. Mm-hmm. Um, that's all I had, like, kind of in my notes there, and making sure I didn't. Yeah, I, that's everything that I've got. Yeah, that's everything that I had too, as far as notes. The only thing I have left is quotes. The one that I have is pretty funny. <laughs> it's Klaus. He goes, "What kind of snuff movie is this?" When he goes into the mausoleum and sees his younger self dead, with Reginald over there timing him, <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny. Um, the first one I've got is when Diego uh, sees Lila for the first time, and mm-hmm. she's happy to see him, and he goes, "Wait, you're happy to see me? What's up?" <laughs> oh, there's something else that I I don't know why I put it in my quotes, but it, it's it is in note, but we could talk about it. Uh, the buffalo yeah. that is a clue later on for c- the season. Mm-hmm. It references the room, so we see that it's in the coffee that Klaus sees. Uh, he's right. looking into. I forgot about that. Yeah, that his mom his mom shows gives him, and he sees the buffalo, and he realizes and. What I didn't notice until the, the this most recent watch, the buffalo, it kind of has a split down the middle, mm-hmm. which, again, is foreshadowing the fact that we have one half is in our world and the other half is in the other world. Yep. We so got the head and somebody else got the butt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The only other quote I have is uh, five when he's talking about getting Harland over to the Sparrow Academy. And he says, the kindest cut wins. He said the title of the episode Mike. yeah well uh, yeah that's <laughs> when five says victor we are down to ethical triage here we can't mm-hmm. save everyone the kindest cut wins yeah that's the whole quote yeah. ethical and, triage that's a good i'm glad you got the whole quote because i didn't i didn't save the whole quote that's really good yeah the last one i would have would be stan and it's referring to klaus when the, he comes back to life and they're walking from the elevator to the other siblings and he goes what if we were to cut off your head? Would it grow two of you? <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, this ain't Deadpool, so I don't think that's going to yeah, happen. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So. <laughs> all right. That's all I had. That's all you have. But, uh, yeah. but before we move along, let's move into... Uh, well, we, we got no feedback, obviously, because we haven't been up. <laughs> right. We've been, yeah, we've been remiss on that. So We've been remiss on a lot of things. We, we won't go into, like, uh, suggestions or anything now, just to keep it a little quick. Okay. But, uh, I, I, do have one, I do have one news item that I put in the doc, because it came out the week that I did this doc. Yes. That, according to Variety, the Umbrella Academy has been renewed for a fourth season and fi- fourth and final season. So we've been yep. talking about it, and it was Variety did confirm that that is Netflix has confirmed that. So awesome! Yeah, I have more to add to uh, the news as well. 
Mm -hmm. Tom Hopper, who plays Luther in the Umbrella Academy, is in a new Netflix show. It just came out in, within the past month. Uh, it's a Netflix rom-com that's out there, a movie called Love in the Villa. Oh. And I, I saw it. It was pretty funny. Uh, it's literally like two people get stuck. They, they, they book the same villa, uh -huh. and uh, they can't get out of it. But, you know, he's from Britain, so he has his British accent in it. So you get to hear him in his real, you know, his regular voice. And it, it's pretty cute just to watch. So if you're into rom-coms or something like that, but it's just them trying to deal with living together within a small villa, I thought it was pretty cool. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, last one would be, well, Keanu Reeves is apparently doing a Constantine movie, another one. So he'll be reprising the role of John Constantine. Now, I could say Constantine on this because on Sam Mancast, we have to say John Const or Joanna Constantine. Yes. Because they changed it, <laughs> how they state it. But yeah, apparently Keanu Reeves is coming. I saw that article and that's, that's interesting. When was, when did the first, when did Constantine come out? Was that the nineties or was it? No, was early two thousands, early two thousands. So it was after the matrix. Okay. Yeah. Rachel okay. Weiss was in it. And, uh, Tilda Swinton, and uh, yeah. a bunch of other people. Uh, I vaguely, I vaguely remember it. I'm just, I don't. Shia LaBeouf a... with it was in it too, of all things. Oh, okay. So, yeah, like I said, uh, I vaguely kind of remember it, but yeah. But if anybody wants to see that version before they actually go see or hear more about the new new movie that Keanu Reeves is doing, literally, it's on Netflix. You could just go back to it and watch there it. There you now. go. I might do that. All right. Well, we should move on to where people could submit their feedback. Okay. Well, obviously, you're listening to us on your podcast player of choice, whether that be Spotify, Google Play, or Apple Podcasts, or whatever one you, you like to use. I know there's a lot of them out there. I just use the Apple one. It's a little touchy sometimes, but I like it. Um, if there are an opportunity to give us some ratings, we would love uh, to get a rating or a review from you, and we would give you a shout out here on the podcast. Yeah, exactly. Check out our uh, website, panels to pixels podcast.com. We are on Facebook, facebook.com slash panels to pixels. We are on Twitter at panels to pixels. That's at panels and the number two and pixels. We have an email address that you can communicate with us, which is panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to pixels spelled all out, the TO right in the middle, and then the number one at gmail.com. And you can find us out on YouTube. Uh, so it's literally a lot of the podcasts are just the it's just the podcast on YouTube with a uh, our artwork on there. But sometimes we'll have videos depending on if we have uh, an interview or we if we added a blue just want to do something live. So uh, all you have to do is search for Panels to Pixels podcast, subscribe, give us a thumbs up if you like what we do, or if that's your preferred method of listening to the podcast. And we are on Instagram at panels to pixels podcast, all spelled out in letters. Exactly. And you can check out all the other podcasts on the next level podcast network. Uh, we highly recommend them all. Wilhelm with Ben, Ben starting to put more stuff into motion for Wilhelm, uh, the melting pad podcast zero and so much more. All you have to do is go to next level radio online.com and check them all out there. Very nice. Coming up, uh, you will either hear the next episode of the Umbrella Academy or She-Hulk or uh, whatever we post up because that's what we do. Exactly. <laughs> and where else can listeners hear us? Well, I send voicemails to various other podcasts that our friends do. I love to uh, hear my own voice, apparently. Um, <laughs> but uh, but uh, so I enjoy doing that. So if you're listening to any of the Podcastica or occasionally TV podcast industries, or even Adrenaline, uh, even Pirate Core Entertainment uh, Network, you will hear my voice on other podcasts. Yep. And you can hear me on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast on the Pirate Core Entertainment Network. Therein we cover, you know, action, adventure, fantasy, sci-fi, thrillers, suspense movies. The last episode that was up was Predator that you and I did, Steve. Uh, we're going to yes. continue that, move on to Prey. And then uh, Jerry and I will be covering the Omega Man and uh, look out for those when they do nice. come out. Charlton Heston? Yep. And you could also hear me on Podcastica Network on the Sandman cast. So all you have to do is look for House Podcastica, find the links there, and uh, just go, even if you go to podcastica.com, you could actually get that and put that in your uh, player of choice and 
listen to it. So it's Jamie, our friend Jamie, and I covering Sandman that's on Netflix. So check that out there. If you're Podcast looking for all the all the Podcastica shows, you can search. I did this in Apple Podcast. If you just search for Podcastica, mm-hmm. P-O-D-C-A-S-T-I-C-A, mm-hmm. all the shows will come up right there, and you can subscribe, like them. Um, that's uh, that would help them and help us out uh, with panels to pixels as well. Exactly. Yeah, because you'll see our links there as well. Uh, Jason has put a lot of stuff too for all the uh, the hosts and stuff that are on. Uh, podcast nice. network which is pretty cool nice so uh, well, there is our show and i want to thank everybody for listening same podcast different panel different pixel i'm mark and i'm steve and this was panels to pixels podcast and we'll see you on the next panel good night everybody good night